I think realistically, if Elon walks in the door tomorrow and says, guys, we did some simulations and actually it's like, we can get another 5,000 kilograms into space if we just land it horizontally. If we kind of give up on our ego and land horizontally, at least on Earth, then, you know, I think they could be doing that pretty quickly. Because that's the thing is, uh, this ultimate thing has been to land on Mars and, you know, other planets. And Mars doesn't have a runway, doesn't have... A, you know, a thick enough atmosphere to utilize aerodynamic flight like that. So you have to do propulsive landing for Mars. Um, you're going to land on an unprepared surface, you know, so it has to be able to do this at some point. Mm-hmm. The, the ultimate, it sounds ridiculous and it is, but the ultimate goal of it is to land on Mars. There's not much of an atmosphere to like, yeah. to help you with the, to, for the belly flop to be useful. There's only 1% the atmosphere on Mars as there is on Earth, but you still want to utilize as much of that atmosphere as possible. So at, in the upper atmosphere, it's still going to be coming in more or less uh, kind of perpendicular to the airstream. I guess it's probably more like, you know, 60 degrees, 70 degrees to the airstream, like where it's belly flopping. And it's going to especially do that on Mars. It's going to need to, you know, use up as let the little bit of atmosphere there is, you know, you're coming in at insane velocities. And so even that 1% thin atmosphere is still going to do a lot of work. Now on Mars, it, there's only 38% of Earth's gravity on Mars. So the belly flop maneuver is a lot, it, it could be a lot more conservative. You could do that at like 5,000 feet up and it just wouldn't matter as much because there's not as much gravity loss or gravity drag. So you can kind of just more slowly, gently, you know, you don't have to do this crazy extravagant, like belly flop, you know, flip maneuver. Um, But it would still something at some point you would transition from more or less perpendicular to the airstream to, you know, on a horizontal to landing vertically. I like how we're having this old boring conversation about the differences of landing on earth versus on Mars. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) This is a surreal that this is actually a real conversation. Well, that then, uh, this is something that we're discussing. Yeah. Because it has to do both. Yeah. But in my opinion, <laughs> yes, I think we'll pretty quickly see an evolution of Starship that's like dedicated versions for certain tasks. Sure. And at the end of the day, again, if if it's if someone runs a simulation and says it's actually more efficient and it's better just to land horizontally on a runway, then that's what's gonna happen. You know, it. It, it doesn't matter, but they still will develop, you know, if, if the ultimate goal is to land on Mars and they'll have a dedicated Mars variant, you know, which will likely look different than the Earth variant, you know, and they'll still probably be launched on the same booster. You know what I mean? So there's... Oh, you mean like that particular vehicle will not be returning back to Earth. It'll need to be modified because because uh, the ultimate is to have one starship that goes to Mars, lands on Mars and takes off of Mars, lands back, back on Earth and is reused again. Yeah. Over and over and over. And there's a chance that you, you know, you have just a, a cycler, just a, you know, if you're, if you, at the end of the day, you're just really trying to see what is most feasible, what's the most efficient. You literally have a vehicle dedicated to Mars. Mars is easy to do a single stage to orbit. Mm-hmm. It's a lot lower gravity, a lot thinner atmosphere. You can easily do a single stage to orbit. You get into orbit, you park to a dedicated, you know, transfer vehicle that goes between Earth and Mars. It only stays in space. You don't have heat shields. You don't have landing legs. You don't have all these things that you need. And ideally it's nuclear powered. So it's super efficient. Mm -hmm. That gets you back to earth. Once you're at earth, you rendezvous again with another landing starship. And that starship might be a horizontal runway starship, you know, like there's no, I I don't see the, and I I think ultimately it'll win out where we don't have a one size fits all. I think that's the, that's the flaw of the space shuttle really is that it was trying to do everything and ended up kind of doing nothing well. But that's, I think what SpaceX has proven, I mean, SpaceX already has variants coming. There's already going to be a dedicated lunar lander for NASA, for the Artemis program. There's already going to be a tanker variant. There's already going to be likely just a pure cargo version. There's likely going to be a human version. We'll likely see evolutions of this thing happen, you know, relatively quickly. And when, once it's all working, it's only a matter of weeks before people riding on it will be complaining about the speed of the Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> As the old like uh, Louis C.K. joke with like, we're, you're flying <laughs> on a chair through the air. Yes. It's you incredible. Didn't even, <laughs> you didn't even know this existed and now you're <laughs> complaining about it. Uh, it's great. Exactly. <laughs>